Hello, koi fish artists. Today, we are going to move on to part two of creating a koi fish or carp kite. So what we have here is our carp kite cutout. We have decorated it with our oil pastels and made our design symmetrical on either side. So let's begin. What well, we're going to need are our watercolor paints and a cup of water with for a brush and a messy mat or something underneath our workspace. The way we are going to do this today is we are going to make the carp kite, which is made out of filter paper, much like coffee filter paper. We're gonna make this nice and wet and then we're gonna add our colors, which we have added nice clean water to and we've allowed these to activate and start soaking. We're gonna add this color right onto our carp kite. We'll add a little bit more water and it'll help disperse it. I'm actually gonna show you how to make this in a way that kind of looks like tie dye. So I'm gonna make it rainbow from the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, all the way down. So it's really, really simple. It's as easy as you imagine it would be. We just simply wet the paper, add the color, let it bleed together. That means it blends together. That's what we call it when watercolors mix on the paper. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take nice clean water and I'm just going to start by adding water where I wanna start my color. And the beautiful thing about this filter paper and watercolor paints on oil pastels is you just put the water wherever you need it to go. It is okay. I'm going to move this up a little bit because I do know something about this. As I paint, this filter paper will allow the paint to go through it and it'll get on the messy matte paper below. What I want to do is I want to continue to just work, work, work and not lift up my carp kite at any point. So you will see me move this so it stays on the screen, but I'm not picking up my kite and moving it. You also want to be somewhat gentle because there are cuts, as you found, I'm sure, where the scales are, where the fins are, and we don't want to yank and accidentally pull and tear these different cuts with our brush. So just be gentle. We're not in a hurry. We want to do a good job. I'm just adding clean water right now, just getting it nice and wet to start with. So that's what we are all doing. We're just adding water right on top of everything. You put it on the oil pastel, you put it on the paper, it will move around. Don't even worry about it. If you miss a spot, it's okay. When you add paint later, you're gonna add water on top of that paint and then it'll get wet then. All right, just keep going. Add that water, add that water. And then in a moment, what you could do is you could pause while you're still putting water on your paper. I'm, I know I'm off the camera right now. I'm down lower where you can't see, but I'm still adding water. Um, you can pause right before we do the painting part. Okay, almost there. So now would be a great time to pause because I'm gonna show you how to do the painting part next. All right, here we go. So I am going to leave the mouth of my fish alone. I'm gonna leave this part up here with the strip white, just leave it there. I did put a little water up there, which is fine, but I'm not gonna put any paint there. So any paint that kind of bleeds up into that direction, that's fine. I'm not gonna try to control it and add more water. Here we go. I'm gonna start with some red paint. So I just dip my brush, it's down here. Here we go down here into my red and I'm just gonna dab some red like this so if the paint accidentally sticks there later it'll have kind of a cool design right there nice if you find that your paint isn't really spreading out it means not enough water so just add some more water to that no big deal sometimes it helps because the paint will sort of settle and it gets underneath the project and soaks in from the back. So that's kind of a neat phenomenon too. Just keep adding water. It will help spread that paint around. 
don't worry. Keep adding water to your paint as well. Keep that nice and moist. You do not need to paint yours, of course, like I'm painting mine. You need to make your own artist choice about how you want this to turn out so that you're happy with how your art turns out for you. Don't make it for someone else, make it for yourself. I'm gonna go on to my next colors, continue working. So you're just gonna see me simply just add colors one after another. I'm gonna to continue to do that as I go to the next side. You're gonna see right now I'm gonna add orange. I don't need to put it right on top of the red. If I add water, see what it does? It's just gonna bleed down into the red paint that I had there before. Keep adding water. Make sure you've got a good messy mat underneath it. And then you should be good to go. So have fun. Play with those paints. Do this any way you wanna do it. You don't have to do it the way I'm showing you. There's lots of techniques. You could even splatter paint a little bit of paint on here when you're done and see how that turns out. There are so many different things that you can do. So I'll do a little of that at the very end. If you watch the video to the end, I'll do a little splatter paint. Then you can see what it turns out to look like. All right, everybody, have fun painting. Stick around to the very end so that you can see how this turns out. Mm -hmm.